your active participation. Thanks to Emma and all of these who have done a great job here this morning. And we're not finished. There's still more to come. Amen. We've been missing you too. About 10 pounds ago I saw you. And uh, so good to see everybody. Thanks to those who are watching online. We encourage you to join us. Wednesday nights, we have resumed our children's and youth services. And so when your children come on Wednesday night, they will be able to go directly to the activity Sister Andrea has for them. And the youth will be meeting in Union Station in their youth room with Brother Jonathan and Sister Lindsay. So I'm encouraging you to join. If you've noticed, if you were not here, the service that we had, the altar and the notes, we're going to continue to leave that up just a few more Sundays. But we have written down some things that we had asked the Lord for, some promises and some prayers. And so those are there. If you want to come by sometime, make it a prayer request. You're welcome to look those over. That's why they are there. And I thank you for taking care of our family this week. Um, I don't know how my wife is going to come through all of this, but I'm going to have to go on a diet because you all have fed us well. And I appreciate it very much. Um, and Sister Jane told me that she had more volunteer than she actually needed. And that makes me feel good and heavy. But um, thank you very much. My wife's doing good. She's listening, so I have to be careful what I say. Um, the first few days, couple of days, she was uncertain about what was going to happen and all of that. And now that we're three days into this, she's getting a little more rambunctious. And so I have enjoyed telling her to shut up and sit down till Tuesday. But when Tuesday comes, I'm probably going to be in trouble because it's all piling up. But um, she's doing well. It is still the biggest struggle is having to keep her head down all the time. And she gets 10 minutes an hour that she can get up. The rest of the time, she's supposed to have her head down like this. And so there's a lot that we get to do while her head's down. But um, so that ends on Tuesday morning. So continue to pray for us. The doctor um, said everything looked well, and she goes back this week for a follow-up visit. But I just wanted to thank all of you for your kindness and all that you've done for us this week. This is October, which has become traditionally clergy appreciation week, month, however we calculate that. I think October is a month, isn't it? But, and last year, I spent a little bit of time and talked about a couple of the men in the church that make my pastoring here much more efficient. If you think it's bad as it is, just imagine what it would be like if these weren't helping me. So this morning, I want to take just a moment and recognize another. And Brother Byron, I appreciate very much your contribution to my work as pastor. You've been faithful all the years I've been here, and you are a man of prayer. You've walked these streets in Finley with prayer walks. You've done things that a lot of folks don't see because most of it's behind the scenes, but I rely on your faith and faithfulness, and I appreciate you very much. And I've got just a small token here of that, if you don't mind coming. And if you all would, give him um, a little appreciation this morning. Appreciate you very much. Thank you. And I know that you all know him. Many of you have known him a lot longer than I have. But I, I do appreciate his commitment to our church, to, to God's word, and his prayers. Prayer is the most underrated power in the, in the scriptures, in the world. And Brother Byron is one that um, has been influential in helping us realize that and, and doing it and I appreciate it very much and thank him for that and there's a little um, gift in there that maybe he can since we can't go out and, and party like we could six months ago um, there's a little online stuff maybe that he can go buy and some party poppers or something and live and life back up but we appreciate you very much this morning um, I think I've given you all the announcements that I've needed to give you, but I've asked Brother Glenn to have the message for us today. And so he is coming to preach to us this morning. Let's give him our attention and allow the word of the Lord to speak to our hearts.
be up here this morning. I appreciate it a lot. Uh, I'm not going to be able to. You know, apparently they somebody's been cooking for me too, right? <laughs> Get this thing to the side, will we? <laughs> I'm so glad that all of you here. I know you've been standing quite a bit this morning, but would you stand with me one more time, um, or or at least at least one more time? I'm going to read a few verses of scripture, and then we're going to pray, and then I'll let you sit back down. I want the Lord to speak to us today because I believe from the way his presence is already rested in this building this morning that uh, he has some, a message for us. And so um, I want to read from, with you from 2 Kings chapter 6. I'm going to read verses 8 through 17, and I know it's quite, quite a lengthy portion of scripture, but I will, be, I will, I will try to be, be brief as we read, and then, and then we'll go from there. All right, so read that with me with verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. The man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once or twice. Multiple times that king of Syria has tried to come against Israel, but the man of God had spoken to them, said, don't go that way. There's a trap set for you. And so they were saved because the man of God told them what was going, what was going to happen. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, Behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And, Elish, and he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they be, that be with them. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. 2020? Let's pray and ask God to anoint his word. I believe he's got something for us because I, I thought our pastor was going to just preach the message in the 30 seconds that he spent up here before I walked up here. The songs that have been sang that we did not talk about have led us to understand that there is a God that is for us. There is a God, that means there is a God that is for you. There is a God that is for you, and we're going to talk about that for a few minutes. Let's pray and ask His anointing on our ears to receive His ever-powerful Word. Lord, I thank You for Your goodness. Thank You for Your mercy today, God. Thank You for allowing us into Your presence. Thank You for meeting us when we worshiped You. Thank You for being faithful. Thank You for being loving. Thank You for being merciful today. Lord, we thank you for your word that you've already established in heaven. And I thank you because it doesn't change that when you spoke it, we can still count on it today. I pray that you would open our ears, open our hearts, God, to understand what you have to say to us today. In Jesus' name, Lord, we put our faith and our trust in you. Have your way in us in the remainder of this service, God. Help us to understand your truth. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you for your prayer. You can be seated. God bless you. God bless you. I'm going to need some help this morning. I need a couple of people, a couple of brave folks. Just, it's, it's not going to be overly complicated. I need a couple of people that will stand up and help me. Come on, not just the same. But I, I got it. I didn't set a crock pot thing. Sister Jane, you going to help me? If you'll come up here, I need one more. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, thank you. If you will go out and meet Brother Kurt right back here by this far entrance. Sister Jane, if you'll come right up here. I don't know how comfortable that is, but you want to just, you don't want it? That's fine. 
We'll put, well, I thought maybe you need to lean back on it or something, but you're good. I'm sorry for not having you a good chair. That's okay. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to interview you, and we're going to interview Brother Tim here in just a minute, too. We're going to ask him the same questions. How comfortable are you right now? How comfortable I am? Uh-huh. Oh, you, you need, do we need a mic? Can y'all hear her? Number four, Brother Jonathan, James Mike. James Mike, here I am. Hang on, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on, we got to go back out. <laughs> we can't have him here. And I, said, I told him we was going to signal him. I know. Tell him, hold him until we signal him. Okay, so how comfortable are you? Pretty comfortable. Pretty comfortable, that's what I thought. Can you... Um, all right, Luke, go stand in the middle of that aisle. Just stand, look up here. We can do it just on this one. Okay, James, will you take 30 seconds, 30 seconds to describe what's going on in this room, starting now? There are several people staring at me. Um, <laughs> Brother Luke is standing in the middle of the room, Brother Jonathan is standing in the back of the room. There's 2020 on the, on the um, screen, like a vision 2020, which is interesting to me. I thought you were planning on 2020 of the year. Um, there's Sister Julia Fanny. She's warm. I'm warm, too. Come with me. Um, Sister Angie just coughed. There's a beautiful little baby sitting on the pew, the second row, and there's another one on this third row. All right. And there's another couple back there. And your time is up. Thank you for that. Stay right there. All right, Brother Tim, you're doing good. He, he, we're not tricking you. We're not here. We're going to bring you over here to the stool. You put your hand on it and find out you can get a seat. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Come. You're good. You're, you're right here. All right, let's get Brother, Brother Tim a mic. We're, looking, we're doing number two, Brother Jonathan. Here you go. Microphone. All right, I'm going to ask you the same questions that I just asked Sister James. Um, first of all, how comfortable are you right now? I'm fine. Okay. Do we have to do that here? See, I'm spoiled. I got this thing, and they learned with me. They do all the turning off and on because I'll forget it, and I'll be chewing a peppermint. And y'all know. Okay. So um, you're comfortable. Can I be honest with you? Yes. I know you pretty well. That was a week I'm comfortable. Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. I just want to confirm that. Okay. Uh, we're going to give you 30 seconds, and I want you to describe exactly what is happening in this room right now, and that will begin now. Um, the congregation is sitting, and they're listening to you. Um, You're sure? I think they're listening to you. <laughs> Are you sure the congregation is in here? Yes, that I hear them kind of chuckling a little bit. You um, sure they're sitting? I'm, I'm yeah, sorry, go ahead. I would assume they're sitting. They stand during the song service, so they're probably sitting now. Um, um, nobody's at the music platform's empty except for me and you maybe Jane that's about it still got a little time um, uh, alright time's up that's good thank you <laughs> Okay. thank you for that you can take your blindfold off now and you can place your I'll take your mic get that out of your way you guys can be seated thank you We do a lot of things, we do a lot of things in our life in order to see better. James said, I'm comfortable. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to that in a minute. The reason I brought my bag up here was because I wanted to make the point. Because as I got to looking at all of this, I thought, you've got to be kidding me. I thought, you know, we do a lot of things to make our lives, to make it to where we can see better. A lot of people wearing glasses out here today. A lot of people wearing contacts out here today that we don't even know about. I thought, okay, glasses and contacts. I got it. I got a tablet. 
You know what this thing will do? It'll light up. It will backlight. You know why it backlights? So I can see better. And when it gets, if I'm good, I can take a, what can I do with it? Just like your phone. I can take a picture. I can take a picture. You know why? So that I can see later on what was happening right now. And then when I look at a picture on Facebook or any other social media, I can touch that picture and save it and keep it. And then I could touch it again and do that right there and magnify it so that I can see it better. That's what's just that. I haven't even scratched the surface on that, I'm sure. In this pocket, I've got thin point colored markers that will write on thin Bible paper without going through it. Awesome. You know why I mark it up? So that I can see it more easily and more quickly. And then I've got a pen that I can write with and see more easily. I've got... Well, that's just another pen. I'm serious, okay? My kids have accused me of dad zone. I am past dad zone. This week, I bought reading glasses. I use them for one reason only, and that's so far, because I just haven't gotten adjusted to them yet. I'm in granddad zone now. And when I'm sitting, on the, on, on the occasions when I'm sitting on the couch, and I've got a bowl of something right here, my ice cream or whatever, or a small plate, and I'm sitting on the couch, and I've got my legs crossed, and I'm kicked back. I'm having trouble seeing just right there. So I bought these to fix that so I can see this plate of food better. There's about five or six of these in this side. You know why? I can highlight certain points on my notes or on anything else that I want so that I can see it better we're this is this could we could be here for I got started writing a list check this out we have multiple pairs of glasses we can also wear sunshades on the way to church this morning before we got out I asked my wife will you look down in the console of my truck and get the cleaner out and clean my glasses they are filthy so I needed my glasses clean so now we have spray bottles and Little towels to clean your lenses with because we want to see better. We have mirrors in our homes so that we can look at ourselves in the mirror and see what we need to fix and see what we need to cover and see what we, you know, all that kind of good stuff. And then we look at, uh, we look at mirrors in our vehicles. I've trained at work about how to set our mirrors to see behind me and cut out all of the blind spots because I need to be able to see. And now we have backup cameras. We have reflecting cameras tape that goes around our truck it goes around our uniform it goes on our running shoes we have uh, eye black that goes under the eyes of athletes because at times there the Sun can reflect off of the white in their eyes and get can lower their uh, ability to see we have larger TV screens one back there we have projectors up here and in our homes it just keeps growing and growing right we have um, let's see we have uh, windows that we can look out of in our home because we want to see what's outside and we have peepholes in our doors so that we can find out who's actually knocking on the other side. We have ring that now we put out. They can press a button or whether they don't press the button, we know when they come on our property. We have security cameras all the way around us because we want to see. There are baby monitors. There's FaceTime where we can visit with each other and we don't have to be in the same room or even in the same country. We have surgery that Sister E has just gone through to help fix her eye that, so that she can see better. Sister E, we're praying for you, and uh, we, you may not be seeing us. We hope you're hearing us. Everybody clap your hands if you've been praying for her, and we're ready for her to get back. We have lights all around our homes. We have lights here. We have a light shining right down so that I can see. And we have uh, flashers on our cars and flashers on our bicycles. We have um, positions on shelves in Walmart. And there are end caps that people want to be on because they're going to be more visible. There are billboards. There are colors in um, 
in a branding that like Kayla does in her business. There are colors that sooner or later, if you brand it right, simply seeing that color means that company. And so there are things like that, all kinds of signs. We've seen uh, yard signs that Brother Mark uses, and there are political signs that are going up. We've got the highlighters, the pens. We've got microscopes, telescopes, magnifying glasses. We've got scopes on guns. We've got infrared sights, x-rays, PowerPoint slides, pictures, front row seats, and boosts on the top so that the football coaches can see what plays to call from an aerial view. The list goes on and on. Anybody get in the picture that we put great value on sight? What we see is what we work toward, protect, and live by. What we see. Because... Seeing is believing, right? Seeing is believing. At least that's what we think. Because we would fight you tooth and nail over what we saw. We will argue and argue and argue because I saw it. And yet, the magician makes his money banking on what we did not see. And what we did not see in the magician's trick is just as true as what we did see. We just didn't see it. And because we didn't see it, we didn't believe it. Asaph wrote in the 73rd Psalm, verses 2 and 3, talking about sight, talking about what he saw and how it affected him. You can read that with me if you got it says, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. When I saw, I saw how good they were doing. The wicked, the ones that were not living like I lived, the ones that were not serving God, I saw that. And my feet almost slipped. I almost walked away. I almost fell. I almost removed myself from my God because I saw the prosperity of the wicked and it sent me down a path in my mind and in my heart and in the, almost the way I was going to live. Because seeing is believing. You see, we've, we've, we've had much public outcry of late. I mean, 2020, seriously, the year, Sister Jane, the year, it's going to be an adjective. It's going to be an adjective. You wait, give it, give it two years. When your car breaks down and you get a ticket for parking in the wrong spot and you get to work and the computer won't fire up, you just say, this day's just been 2020. It's going to become an adjective soon because it has been something else. And in our society, we've seen much outcry. And much, some of the outcry has happened because we got a piece of the truth. We got a short clip of a vision and we saw it. And because we saw a small piece, we're ready to fight tooth and nail because we saw it. Ignoring what we didn't see. But remember, what we didn't see is just as real as what we did see. Okay? We place emphasis on vision. We place emphasis on what we see. We do everything we can so that we can see better. But it's not all about what we see, according to the Word of God. David said, I looked and I saw, and man, the wicked, and my feet nearly slipped. But you got to understand, again, we go back to the magician. The magician in the Bible, if you want to call it that, just for the sake of this argument, was Satan in the garden. He came to Eve and deceived her, the Bible said. He made something look like something else. He made something that was not look like something that it was. And the Bible said in Genesis chapter 3 verse 6, when she saw that it was good for food and then it was something that would make her wise, then she disobeyed God. Because I see it. I see what you're saying. And it's right here. 
and because she felt comfortable in her sight, she was deceived. Because what she saw, there is more than what you see that's true. We see it in the deception of the enemy. He always tries to maximize the enemy's power while he minimizes the word of God. And it's all about perception. It's all about sight. It's all about what you see. If he can make the word of God look smaller and the power of the enemy look bigger, then he is moving us to be deceived into something that is not right and into a place where we don't want to be. So what do we do when we're like Asaph? And we begin to look around and we see those that uh, are evil and those that are, are not doing the things that they should be doing when they begin to flourish and we become distracted by what we see. And you know what? Sometimes that can even happen in the church. That we could see people flourish and we could see people doing well and you say, well, I know they don't have this all together and that all together and we begin people watching and we begin to say, they don't deserve where they are and so my feet slip and I walk away. We've watched it happen before. It's a danger and I'm not saying that to call somebody out that has left the church. I'm saying that because we need to make, make notice of that and say, I don't want to get to the place where all I see is what's going on with the enemy, what's going on with those that are evil, the ones that are being blessed when I don't feel like they deserve to be. I've got to keep my eyes on the one that is true, that is living, that is real. I've got to worship him. I cannot be distracted. I cannot be deceived. So Asaph said that can happen because the enemy always tries to minimize the word and maximize the power of the enemy. How do we, how do we get away from that? How did Asaph get away from it? Verse 17 of Psalm 73 says, When I came into the house of the Lord... I understood their end. Oh, I didn't see that before. I came into the house of the Lord and, and the vision changed. Look, I'm a sports fan. I'm a sports fan. There are times when I watch a play and I can make a call. It's like, he's safe. I saw it. I saw it. He's safe. I know it was close, but he's safe. And Colin posted the other day, and dude, you were right. The camera work now in sporting events is, I know, in, when I'm dead and gone, they're going to be looking back at this and laughing probably at the camera. But though you see flecks of dirt fly up. And when they go back to replay the baseball stuff, it's like you can tell that much space between that cleat and that bag as to whether or not his foot's on the base yet. And it is crisp and clear and it's phenomenal. I didn't see it in the camera view that they showed first. So I called him safe. Or I called him out. But then all of a sudden they spin it to the other side with another camera that they've got from an angle that I couldn't see. And everything changes. That happens to us. If we're not careful, we look from one side and we see something or we don't see it. And so we say it's not there or we say that it is. And we get our mind made up and we don't see everything. And Asaph said that changed when I came into the house of the Lord. That's why it's valuable when we come into the house of the Lord and we fellowship with one another. That's why it's valuable when we worship together. That's why it's valuable when we receive the word of God because Things start changing. The camera angle changes. I felt a certain way when I was at home all by myself and the enemy began to show me one view that minimized the word of God and maximized his power and his presence. But then I came into the house of the Lord and we began to worship and praise and we sang about him being a provider and him being a healer and we sang about him being a savior and we sing about him giving us wisdom and understanding and knowledge and the joy and the love and the peace that comes from his presence. And all of a sudden the picture changes from what the enemy tried to tell us outside that's why some things clear up when we come to the house of the Lord get to the house of the Lord participate in worship camera angle changes when you do that there's revelation in the presence of God there's revelation in the presence of God 
God doesn't let us be deceived when we, when we hang out in His presence. And that's another reason why our devotions at home are important. That's why we've got to get into His presence in our houses and in our rooms and in our cars and wherever we are, we've got to find a time to get into the presence of God because there's revelation when that happens. There's strength that comes from that. Trust in God. Trust in God. Remember, you can't get the whole picture if you're not in His presence. You can't get the whole picture outside the presence of God. Now, in this story, we read about it. Syria is trying to come after Israel, lays out some plans to attack, and Elisha's getting the word. So Elisha takes that word to the king. He said, look, you don't even come this way. They're hanging out. It happens so often. God so often protects his people that the king of Syria thinks he's got a mole. Right? He thinks he's got a mold. He's saying, guys, tell me who it is in our group of friends that is snitching us out to the king of Israel. Find out who that is. And they say, it's nobody except for the man of God that is going to the king of Israel and telling him the plans that you're making in your bedchamber and your most private area of dwelling. When you go in there and it's a secret place and very few make their way into that area, and the place that you feel most comfortable telling your plans. He's telling what that is. In other words, you can't go to a place, enemy of the people of God. You can't go to a place where God doesn't know the plans that are being made for you. The traps that are being laid for you. God already knows about what's out there to get you. He knows about it. And he can let the man of God bring that information to you. And say, watch for a trap in this area. So much so that the enemy will say, how in the world? Are they figuring out what's going on in this life? This life is being protected. This group of people is being watched over. There is a God in heaven that makes that revelation in His presence and in His spirit that gives us a view that is different than what we see when we're outside and when the enemy is trying to deceive us. He shows us the entire picture. Except for the fact, well, let's just read it. When the servant of the man of God gets up that morning to do what he's supposed to do, they've all come in, they're on the mountain, they're surrounding him. He goes out there and he sees. And he knows we've got trouble. We've got issues in front of us now. So he runs back in and, and verse 15 says, And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host come past the city both with horses and chariots, and his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? What are we doing now? We are surrounded. We're done now. We figure they were probably out to get us, but we're surrounded now. What are we supposed to do? Pastor just said it just a few minutes ago, fear not. You're sitting on your fear. If you're here to fear and you're content with that, not a lot's going to change. But if you're, you're here today and fear has been bombarding you, can I tell you something? You're not getting the whole picture. I'm not saying it's your fault. I'm just saying you don't have the whole picture yet. You don't have the whole picture yet. They were sitting here surrounded by the enemy that is so frustrated now because they tried to get them time and time again, and they're going to they're gonna take out the man that is telling their plans. They're, he is the only man that stands between them and, and, and apparent victory. And so they're going to take him out. He says, fear not. They that be with us are more than they that be with him. Now, the servant had to be a little confused. I was just outside. I saw the enemy. I saw the enemy. I did not see the us. I, I didn't see them. If they're out there, they're hiding directly behind each and every one of the them. Because all I see is the them. You ever been like that? Maybe you're there right now. All you see is what is surrounding you, and you see them. But the Word of God declared, the Word of God declared that the whole picture is there are more that be with us than be with them. I want to encourage you this morning. Don't go just by what you see. You're not getting the whole picture. If you feel outnumbered today, you're not getting the whole picture. 
If you feel like that you don't have anybody on your side this morning, you're not getting the whole picture. If you feel like your diagnosis is going to beat you, you're not getting the whole picture. Your God is healer. If you feel like you're not be, going to be able to be delivered, your God is a deliverer. You're not getting the whole picture. You're looking out early in the morning as the servant and saying, I see them surrounding. Alas, what am I going to do? What are we going to do from this position and from this place? We are surrounded. Elijah said, yes, we are. We are surrounded. We are surrounded by those forces that are for us. And the forces that are for us have surrounded us, and they are more than those that are against us. Fear not. They that are with us are more than they that are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. <laughs> and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Elisha was covered. Elisha was covered by God. He had his forces surrounding him. What the servant could not see was what was in the spiritual. We spend so many of our dollars and so many ingenuitive things and tools and, and, and stuff that we can use to make our vision better so that in the natural we can see better. And we get to where our focus is 2020. We have 2020 vision in the natural so that we can see the natural. But when all we do is become experts at the natural, we lose the spiritual. And we will walk out the door and see nothing but the enemy in the mountain. And we don't see the spiritual. What if we had that many tools to see better in the spiritual? Where I highlighted what the Word of God said. Where I highlighted and underlined what the pastor preached. Where I came in and worshipped with a the, with the magnifying glass of who God really is. What if I improved my spiritual vision? Because here's the thing. Sister Jane stood right over here and gave us an accurate depiction of what was going on in her world for 30 seconds, right? Brother Tim sat over here. He couldn't see. And he gave a somewhat accurate picture of what was going on in here. But it was not because of what he could not see. Now let me ask you, what was the truth? And how was the truth different between the two? How was the truth different between the two? Or was it the same truth? It was the, exactly the same truth. Oh, well, I did tell Luke to move. I shouldn't have done that, I guess. But what she gave is the truth, and what he gave is the truth, as a sighted person and as an unsighted person, was exactly the same. It doesn't matter whether or not in the spirit you can see what God's doing or whether you can't. God's still doing it. Okay? God's still working on your behalf even if you don't know it. I've looked out the door. I see the enemy surrounding me. That's where faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. So my sight it may not be there. God may not be showing you what he's doing. He may not be giving you every angle, camera angle into your life. But do you trust your God? If you trust your God, it doesn't matter if you are Elijah that knows exactly what's going on. Or if you're the servant that has no clue what's going on. You're surrounded by God's presence. You're surrounded by the forces of God. 2020 vision, even in a year that's going to be an adjective, when I don't know what's going on, when I can't figure it out, I can't see God's camera angles have got you covered. He is there always to be our peace. He's there always to be our, our mercy. He's there always to be our grace. He can always strengthen us. He can always heal us wherever you are. So if you are scared today, if you are nervous, if you've looked out and the enemy has you surrounded and you've dealt with it and dealt with it and dealt with it and you don't know where we're going for here, I'm talking to you. There's a God that has you surrounded this morning. 
Don't give up. Don't look at the enemy and say, look how they're flourishing. Look how things are so much better. Look how I'm dealing with what I'm dealing with. Enter into the presence and the God of the God who is trustworthy, who is faithful, who will always be there for you. And I can promise you, you may not see it just yet, and He may not told, have told you about all the plan for your life yet, because He knows what we can handle and what we can't. So He doesn't always give us every camera angle, but He is faithful to be working for you. He is faithful to work for you. I challenge you to make use of the peace and the presence of God. So what, I, what would I say to you today? Understand the limitations of sight. Understand the source of, of deception. Get into the presence of God and ask Him for spiritual sight. Ask Him for spiritual sight. Help me see God. Because here's what happened. In another verse, Elisha said, God blind them. God said, open, uh, Elisha said, oh, God opened his eyes. God did it. God, uh, Elisha said, God blind them. He did it. Then he carried them off to the wrong city. He said, now open their eyes again. They opened their eyes. They realized that something strange is going on. And then instead of being slaughtered, they were fed. And it ended the war between the two. God ultimately protected them in a way that was you and I couldn't have made up in all of our imagination. But it all had to do with how they handled sight. I want to walk by faith and not by sight. Got to trust in God. That's the only thing. That's the tough part. If we're going to walk by faith and not by sight, there's a lot of trust of a God that's going to have to happen. And it's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be some of the tough stuff that we're going to face. Because we see. It becomes tougher because what we can see. But I'm not walking by sight. I'm not going to walk by sight. I'm walking by faith. And that's why we've got to have a devotion that drives us back to the presence of God. That keeps pushing us back into relationship with Him. And saying, God, this is what I'm seeing, God. Show me something new. Show, show me what you're doing. Show me that I'm okay today. Show me that I can make it. Show me that I'm living for you. Show me that you're here. If you just show me that you're here, that's the camera angle that I want. That's the only camera angle that I need. I will trust in you and I will walk with you. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 14. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 14 is an interesting verse to me. And I'm going to close with this. It's a bit of an angle about the enemy that we're scared of. The enemy that has been abusing us deceiving us and showing us only one angle. Verse 14 says this, Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. This is the king of Syria that did this. I'm not talking about God's forces. I'm talking about, this, is, this verse is talking about the king of Syria, what he had, what he had done to entrap Elisha. And I got to looking at this, and man, that looks scary. And then it, 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 I literally laughed. I had never noticed this before. I literally laughed sitting at my desk when I, when I caught this. I, I know I'm silly, and I'm, my wife says I'm goofy, and I get it. I know that. But this caught my attention, and you can do with it what you want to. We've been scared of an enemy a lot. Well, I read that and said, therefore, this king, that is frustrated because Elisha knows every move that he's going to make, decides, I'm going to send horses and chariots and a great host at night. So he doesn't know. <laughs> so he doesn't know. The dude that's been calling out your every move for the past ever how long, You've been trying to be the enemy of the people of God for so long and he's calling your every move so, so much that they're telling you what's going on from your bedchamber. But let me send a force by night. Look, your enemy, dude, your enemy's goofy. Your enemy's stupid. He cannot battle the forces of God, this God that surrounds us. Not only do we have them outnumbered, 
But we have a God that has more power than we can imagine or think. He can do things for us. He can take care of you. They may have sent a force in the night. Elisha already knew it. Elisha knew it. They were on their way. He's hanging out sleeping. The servant's going out doing his daily duty. Why didn't Elisha tell the servant? You know why he didn't tell him? It didn't matter. Because it doesn't matter if you're Elisha that knows exactly what's about to happen or the servant that doesn't. When we're serving God, whether he's shown us yet or whether he hasn't, he's got us covered. He's got us surrounded. And those that are with us are more than those that are with them. And God's going to take care of us as long as I walk by faith and don't trust this sight that I put so much into trying to make better. I've got to walk with him. I've got to find myself in his presence. So stand with me. And we're, they're going to sing a song, and I'm not sure what they've chosen. I didn't, I don't know. But we're going to worship the Lord together, and here's what I want to challenge you with. As we close, I want to challenge you. If you have been bothered by the enemy, and if the enemy has been telling you something and been trying to discourage you, trying to call you weak, trying to make you think that your God's not here, that your God's not hearing you, that your God's not protecting you, that your God's not powerful enough, I'm telling you now, that's a lie, that's a deception, it's a magic trick. He's trying to make you look over here while he does something over here. He has no power against you. There's nothing that can happen to you that your God can't relay to the people in your life or to you that you need to know about. God is here. He is surrounding us. He's taking care of us. He's taking care of you. So what I would challenge you to do today is do your best to get yourself into the presence of God. How do you do that? Worship, thanks, praise, giving Him glory and honor, recognizing Him as being your protector, your keeper, your provider. Whatever it is you're fighting, and you, you can imagine the answer. Thank God for being that. Thank God for being that. And He will walk into your situation. And I'm going to pray right now as they begin to sing. And I'm going to pray a spiritual blind, uh, blindness to be removed off of all of us. Because throughout the Word of God, Jesus Christ walked and He healed the blind eyes. He healed, it, he healed blind eyes. He healed blinded eyes. He healed the blind. He healed the blind. He healed the blind. And we can become spiritually blind because we're so acute and, and, and in tune to making sure that we can see physically. I'm going to pray right now that, that spiritual blindness is removed from us, that God would open our eyes and let us see what is really surrounding us. And it may not be what you thought. It may be something totally different. You'll see the presence and the power of God that is surrounding your life and protecting, walking with you and taking care of you. He is well able. Let's worship and pray together. Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful for your goodness today. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your mercy, for your power and your strength. I thank you for sending us your word that says you always, always, always walk with us and protect us. Lord, you keep us. It's your power, your delivering, your healing, your health. Lord, your help. Lord, your provision is always with us, and we thank you for that. I pray right now, God, that you would heal blinded eyes. If there, are spiritually blind, if there is spiritual blindness in us today, I pray that the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, of the Word of God, and in the name of Jesus Christ, that you would remove it. God, open our eyes and let us see what you have for us today. Let your will be done as we worship you, as we praise you, as we glorify you and enter into your presence, because you do well in keeping your people. And for that, we're thankful. We give you praise and glory today. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, you amen. Let's worship him together for a few moments. And would you make your way into his presence? Would you thank him for the thing that you need today? Would you thank him for the thing that you need today? And he's going to reveal himself to you that he's you right here, here to be what you need because he's powerful. We walk by faith but not by sight. We've got a God that we can trust in. Let your will be done, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise 
peace keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Hallelujah, Jesus. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. Show me, open You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. We make it. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 